Hi, this is Lisa from Lime Bay Press, and today we're going to be looking at creating artwork using Adobe Illustrator for making photopolymer plates. This is a piece of artwork that we set up earlier so that we could show you how to make the adjustments that you need to to send us perfect artwork for photopolymer plates. This document was set up in Adobe Illustrator as a CMYK document. But sometimes, by accident, you may have set yours up as an RGB document, but that's easy. Just simply come up to File, Document Colour Mode, and then make the adjustment here. We prefer to use Adobe Illustrator because it creates vector files. Vectors are a lot smoother than a raster file, such as is created by Adobe Photoshop. Raster files are okay if they're high resolution, at least 1200 dpi, but you will always get some pixelation around the edges of your artwork. And this is really important if you're using fine lines and text, where we can't make any adjustments to the line weights and make the plates hold for you. One of the most important things that we need to ensure is that your artwork is 100% black or 100% K. Same thing. This is easy to do. You can either take different parts of your artwork individually and come up to this colour palette here and just click on this little button here and it'll already, it'll adjust everything for you to 100% K. Alternatively, you can just adjust the sliders. Just pressing the first button though is a lot more time efficient. So I'll select everything else that we have here and make sure that it's 100% K. Next, and according to which plate you'd like us to make for you, whether it's the KF95, which is a standard depth plate, 0.95 millimetre thick, or the Deep Relief, the 152, which is 1.52 mil thick, you have to make your artwork suitable for those plates and the line widths. Now this is easy to do and this artwork we created was to show you that even when we have some very fine lines it's easy just to add a stroke to your text or to an image to bring it up to those minimum line weights. On a KF95 plate the minimum line weight is 0.25 point. On the KF152 plate the minimum line weight is 0.35 point. This actually isn't a huge thick line. It helps us to create a better shoulder on the plate for you and shouldn't really affect the print that you'll get when you receive your plate. What I choose to do, especially when I've got a piece of artwork of my own that is complete text, is come into type and create outlines. This then takes it away from being an editable text document and turns it into a vector graphic. I'm going to ungroup everything here because we are going to have to work on individual elements of this design because you can probably see there were some thick lines and some thin lines. We haven't found another method yet of checking line widths apart from the one I'm about to show you. So if we zoom in here onto this top line and draw just a straight line which we're going to set to 0.35 point because I'm assuming I'm going to need a 152 plate doesn't matter what colour it is, it doesn't have to be 100% black. We take the line that we've drawn up here at 0.35 point and we drag it down to our design. If we then zoom in and compare it to the text, you can see that this line of text is above or at 0.35 point. Let's delete that line for now. 
we now look at the other text using the same font, we can either draw, draw another line or use the one we had before. Again, just to compare, we can see that the main sans serif face that we've used for this design is more than adequate and above the minimum 0.35 point. Let's have a look at those thin bits. Let's come in and see Matilda. You can already see that a lot of the lines on this script are very fine. If we do the same thing again and draw our 0.35 line, you can see that these thin areas really do fall below the 0.35 point. So when we talk about adding a stroke to our design, this is what we do. If I zoom out, you can see that I'm just selecting all the text with that fine line. With that text selected, I'm going to add a 0.1 point stroke to start with to see how it thickens up and compares to this line. I also like to check on the stroke palette that we have nice smooth connections. We don't want any pointy bits. Now if I zoom right in here, you can see that the text now is borderline on our 0.35 point line. Let me just turn this a different colour so that you can see easier. There we go. This 0.35 point is actually still a little bit thicker. So I'm just going to up my line thickness, the stroke that I've applied to that text, by half a point. Or half of half a point. There we go, spot on. Now I can see that the stroke that I've added is not 100% K. So importantly, I need to make sure it is. Let's have a look at the whole thing. You can see, just by adding that stroke, we've brought up the text to a weight that will hold on the plate without adversely affecting the design. We need to apply this method to this part at the bottom here as well. This text is actually smaller, so I can probably guarantee that this thin line is going to be well below the 0.35 point. So again, we select it, and I'm gonna start with that 0.15 point thickness, I'll make sure it's black, to be able to compare my line weight to the text. And it's still sitting below this 0.35 point line, so I need to increase it. So let's try 0.2 point. There we go, spot on. Let's delete this one and have a look at our full design. Lovely. Something I quickly wanted to mention that I brushed by earlier. When I do my own artwork, before I start to make any changes, I always outline my fonts. This makes it easier to add strokes and to adjust certain bits. But also, when you send your artwork to us, unless those fonts are outlined, we have problems getting your artwork onto our system. There are ways and means, and we manage quite well, but you would make our lives so much easier if you could just outline all your fonts to start with. Something we're going to look at now, which doesn't affect every design, is the size of dots. And also trim marks come into this. In fact, anything that can be out there by itself. Designs, or some designs, can now be quite open and small delicate areas aren't supported 
with other parts of design. What I'm trying to say is when you have a dot on an eye, like in this instance, it should hold fine because it's surrounded by other text. So when your plate is made and washed out, that dot will hold unless it's far too small. We have an artwork checklist, which if you want to contact us, we can email to you or you can download it from the website, which gives you details about dots and lines and weights of lines. To show what we mean by dots and lines, I've added just two extra pieces to this artwork, which we'll eventually delete, so that I can show you what I mean with the dots being out there on their own. You can see this colon stands quite a distance away from the rest of the text, which means it stands a chance of being washed away when we make the plate. So that this doesn't happen, I've added a 0.1 point to these dots. This is because when we draw a line to check our dot sizes, the line needs to be 1.25 point thick for the 152 plate and no less than one point thick for the 95 plate. We now bring this over here. You can see we're not actually far off this thickness. In fact, I'm just going to increase it to 0.15 point, just to be on the safe side. Again, it shouldn't affect your artwork, but helps us create a deeper shoulder to support those dots. When using a font like this, it may also be necessary to increase the size of these dots in the same way. It can be a little laborious, but it means that you'll get a really good plate without losing those small details like dots, commas, colons and semicolons. Below this line of text, I've added on a dotted line. This dotted line, to start with, is 1.25 point thick, which again is the minimum line thickness for a dotted line on the 152 plate. If you're using a 95 plate, don't take it below one point or we will stand the chance of it washing away or even going all wobbly. And we don't want that when we come to print. Right, I'm going to delete these two lines for now and quickly talk about trim marks. As you look at my piece of artwork here, and I'll open up the artboard for you, you'll see that it is set to a 148 by 210 mil size, so A5. When I print this, although it's in one colour, I want to add trim marks. So we always print on most of our presses oversized and then trim afterwards. It's not always necessary if you're printing with a treadler and a darner. And you might just only want a plate this size and then you set it up and print the way you feel comfortable. But because we print oversize, we tend to add trim marks to our artwork. That's really simple in Illustrator. All I'm going to do is draw on a box, which will go to the back of my text. As you can see, it's the same size as my actual artwork. And it's lined up. Now I've got my white box. I go object, create trim marks. And Illustrator will add trim marks on there for me. I don't actually need this white box anymore. You can probably see it's got my dotted line around it. We don't need that either, but we don't need the box. So I'm going to delete that. Now we have our trim marks. The first thing I'm going to do is increase the size of my artboard so that if you're having trim marks on your artwork, when you send your artwork to me, the trim marks will be on display as well because they won't be falling off the artboard. Now, Illustrator, when it places trim marks on your artwork, by default applies them as registration. This is something else that we need to alter. It needs to be that 100% black, just by clicking that little black square. 
we also need to look at the weight. Like the dots, they're out there on their own. So if you increase the weight of your trim marks up to 0.5 point, or you could go even a little bit more to 0.75 point, they'll hold. Once all that's done and you're happy with everything, then just save your file and send it over to us and we'll take it from there.